And so in my video today, in the slide presentation, um, what I wanted to do is work, walk you through some of the ideas um, surrounding the Mediterranean, defining the Mediterranean as a space, um, thinking about Europe's um, relationship to the Mediterranean, and also thinking about the way in which the Mediterranean defines Europe and its relationship to very specific and important parts of the world, namely the Middle East and Africa. So to get started, we can think about the Mediterranean and its place in the world, in the known world. And the map that you can see on the screen is a map of the Roman Empire. And the Romans referred to this space as Mare Nostrum. So let's get a little bit closer to that definition and think about what it actually meant to say, what does the word mean, Mare Nostrum? Well, Mare is sea and Nostrum is R. So in literal sense, the Romans referred to the Mediterranean as R C. But we also have to think that in the time of the Romans, of course, the Black Sea was known and a little bit further, other seas were known, but principally, the R Sea was in the center of their world, and it was also the sea that they dominated. So what does the Mediterranean mean? And we'll start off with thinking about what Mediterranean means. So it comes from the word medius, middle, and terra, land, or earth. And so we can take this really literally to think about it. In, it's a sea between lands, between Europe and what we would call Africa. But again, going back to this idea of the Mediterranean Mare, we can also think about it in a different way, as the sea in the middle of the earth. And I like that idea about the middle of the earth because it's the middle of what was known at that time. And so this continues to be very important as we think about Europe today. And that's what we want to be focusing on. <clears throat> so in contemporary usages, there's a way in which the Mediterranean evokes a series of images in the contemporary European imaginary. It's an exotic and sensual place where people go to spend their vacations, sunbathing, swimming in the ocean, boating, also associated with good food. In general, a lot of hedonism. We can also think about it as a space of imperfect and incomplete modernity. So when we think about in comparison with the countries of Northern and Southern Europe, or the countries that are lie on the other side of the Mediterranean, we can also think about these places that are less developed or underdeveloped or incomplete in some fashion. So this is going to evoke images of backwardness, of clannishness, and we can only, we often think about the mafia when we think about Italy, but if we think about some of the questions that we're gonna look, look at um, in this unit about immigration, immigration across the Mediterranean, we'll also be thinking about these mafias as the way the, those individuals who move people and goods across this sea. But this notion of clannishness, sort of closed um, clan, that run the show in these areas, and then also sort of contribute to this image of incomplete modernity is also very important. It's a space of unlawfulness, terrorists. So the terrorists that attack Europe come from the other side of the Mediterranean. Or for example, if we think in the case of the Muslim population in France and the way it's been persecuted or portrayed, more recently, it's also this other that's within, but comes from the other side of the Mediterranean, the North, North African um, immigrants from Algeria, Morocco, et cetera. <clears throat> it's also a space of tension in term religious terms between Islam and Christianity and a certain, certain forms of Christianity, whether it be the Catholicism that we associate with Spain and Portugal, Italy and Malta, or the Orthodox uh, Christianity of Greece and the Balkans. And then of course we have different variations of Islam as we go around the sea, starting with a very sort of secular interpretation, which, was, which is what's dominant on the extremes in Turkey 
and in Morocco to different gradations of, of, of fundamentalism, etc. So for me, when I think about the Mediterranean, it's very important um, to think about the definition and the way in which it functions in spatial terms. So we're thinking, talking about the Mediterranean as a philosophy that's gonna help us understand something about Europe. So there's a field of study that's pioneered largely, but exists beyond his work by an Italian philosopher who is actually a geo-philosopher, Franco Cassano, and his book, Southern Thought. So I wanna think, share some of his thinking about the Mediterranean and apply some of his ideas to some of the cases, a couple of cases. So he writes in the book, the Mediterranean's only acceptable meaning is the one mediated by tourism. Wonderful landscapes and vacation beaches where the disciplined forces of the industrial polis, Northern European cities, escape to enjoy their moments of freedom and sun and rediscover nature and their bodies. So you can see in this quote, He's emphasizing the sensuality, the exoticism of the space. It's a place of escape, as we see in the picture here. This woman, perhaps from Northern Europe, in, and this is a, an image of um, Malta, sort of letting herself go in this sun-drenched um, Mediterranean city for, in a space of vacation. It's a place of escape from the world of work, of industry, that characterizes Northern Europe. And so Cassano emphasizes the way in which tourism um, defines the Mediterranean from without, but also from within. So the way in which that definition of tourism, the definition of the exotic, of sensuality, of clannishness, of backwardness, also becomes internalized in the way in which the Mediterranean thinks of itself. However, when we think for Cassano, the South is not a belated, not yet North, but a place from which to deconstruct a Europe that's much more focused on the Atlantic than on the Mediterranean. And so here we have a different kind of map than the one that we looked at in this slide earlier, in which we see the map, the sea, and the land. And what Cassano invites us to think about is the way in which the water is a surface as well. And the way in which, for the people in the Mediterranean, this, it's not a space between lands, but it's a space unto itself that has its own logic and functioning. So he writes, this sea, which is at once external and internal, inhabited and waded into, this sea as border interrupts the rule of identity and forces one to accommodate division. Here land with its obsession for fixity, assuredness, and appropriation clashes against a boundary. And so what he emphasizes here is that in the Mediterranean, land limits water's expanse. He flips that and invites us to think about the way in which land limits water. So it's not an ocean, an abyss, but rather a transitable space. As we see in this picture, we see a boat crossing me. So it's a, it's a connector, it's not a divider. And so it acknowledges difference Difference must be accepted in this space. So just to reiterate what I just said, land limits water's expanse versus water limiting land expanse. And the second idea is the way in which the sea connects and forces us to accept difference. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to watch a video, a 25-minute uh, documentary called 4.1 Miles. It's a documentary by Daphne Matsiaraki. It was filmed in 2016. And as you watch the documentary offline, off of this video, I'm gonna, I want you to um, 
respond to, I'm going to ask you to respond to these questions in a blog post. Um, first, how are Cassano's ideas represented in the documentary, those which are on the slides and which I've sort of summarized for you? And I also want you to think about, this is a very important for the film that we're going to be watching this week, Terra Ferma. What is striking about the sea captain's attitude towards the migrants? How does the, this represent Mediterranean thinking? How does it represent a concept that's slightly different from the way we typically think about oceans as points of division rather than, rather than as connectors? And finally, I want you to think about how the camera is used as well as to express a particular perspective on difference. So how does the camera engage difference? And this is not a question, but just something to think about. Also think about the way in which the camera ultimately ends up representing the sea as a surface. 